Hey up everybody. I'm just about to make a a stand for a push bike as a as a training stand or an exercise stand, whichever you want to call it. And it's just a quick simple stand I'm gonna make. And I just thought I'd show everybody in case anybody were interested in making one. And it's I'm making it out of three quarter plywood. And you're going to need a piece of plywood. I'm just using scrap off cuts at the moment. But you're going to need a piece of plywood a foot wide by approximately three foot long. So first job you've got to do then is get an exact measurement across the, uh, the spindle where your forks fit on your rear wheel. And I'll just go over to the bike and show you where I mean. And mine actually measures five and five eighths because that's where the spindle is going to sit on this frame first job to do then is to measure your the distance between your your forks of your rear wheel with a nut with a nut on each end butts up to you want to take that exact measurement across the spindle right first of all then you need a piece cutting off that 12 by 48 piece of 3 quarter ply 18 inch long and it's obviously a foot wide and in that piece of wood then you've got to determine what your spindle width is on your bike and whatever your spindle width is mine's five and five eighths you need to draw two lines from the center line equal on each side five and five eighths apart then put another line the thickness of your wood and then drill three screw clearance holes in the center where your wood's going to come and all I've done I've put one in the middle and one at each end then the other way find your center line again and then you want two screw holes for the um, bracket supports that's going to go on to it in the centre of that wood again, that three quarter plywood mark, mark a hole inch and a half in and four and a half inch in and drill a clearance hole for your screw on both sides and where the wheel is going to run in the bike, if you want to keep it as low as possible, I've just put that little cut out in you don't have to put that in but then you'd have to adjust your height a little so I've just cut that out cut a piece out five inch long by two inch where the bottom of the tire is gonna scoop into it right that's that then then you want two side pieces from this from this 12 inch wide piece of wood that you've got you want two two side pieces cut in and the approximately a foot tall 12 inch the same width 12 inch as the piece that I've cut it from and then you're just going to chamfer them sides that's not critical I've just put a 45 degree chamfer on and left a two inch piece at the top and then cut it at 45 degrees then from the other little piece of wood that will be left from your 12 by 48 piece of ply you'll end up with a piece approximately 6 inch 6 inch wide all you've got to do then is cut that diagonally approximately 2 inch from one end do a diagonal cut then you'll end up with two pieces for your side supports let's just assemble it what you've got to do 
where these are going to fit. You need to turn it over, line it up with the holes that you've drilled, then mark off your holes to put yourself a pilot hole in the piece of wood there, and then you do the same with your support and supports in them centre holes just carefully mark off and pilot drill where the screws are going to come in the predetermined markings holes that you in the predetermined holes that you've drilled in your base and if everything's lined up exactly lined up everything should come together okay so using my number eight by two and a half inch long screws I've just got to line those holes up and then they're ready for screwing in Then we can put these end supports in. So you've got to screw these in. Put the wrong screw in that one. Them two smaller screws that's a bit, that the only inch and a half long will need to go in the top of them because there's not much, as much space to go into so we're just going to screw them in there then now I've got an angle screwdriver to fit into my battery drill which I'm going to use to screw them in if you've not got one of them you'd have to put these on first while these are off I've just got to put these two screws in the bottom now for them, uh, them angles and supporting angles and it is it would be helpful if you've got a countersinking bit just to countersink the heads if you put enough force on them they'll, they will bury into wood but it's better with a countersink Then that distance there should measure if you add your metal that you're going to put on for the supports here that's going to go onto your axle should be your axle width. Then it's a matter of determining your, your centre height of your wheel. In my case the 26 inch wheel so it's 13 inches and because I've put this cut out in my tyre will just run into that cut out if you've not put in that cut out and you just have to raise it up fractionally so your tyre misses, misses that the two pieces of metal that you've got you need to cut them four and a half by two and a quarter and all you've got to do is drill a series of holes and wherever you drill those holes in that plate You've just got to match them up and, and drill holes in the side of this frame to match 
so that when they're bolted together to the center of the slot is your wheel your wheel center height and then once you've got those holes drilled you've just got to put a slot in the diameter the di diameter of your spindle put a slot in the same width with a radius in the bottom on both of them and I've had to, I've had to just notch mine just to miss where this uh, my archer gear bracket comes through obviously you might not have, you might not have stir my archer gears on your bike uh, you'd have to just adjust everything to suit it's just a matter of using four of these bolts to come off these I've put I've put three holes in so I can adjust the height if needed so you can adjust it one hole up or one hole down and just put your force plenty and I'm using these square nuts they're M6 So just a point to watch here, when you bolt these to your wood you must make sure that they're, they're in line. Obviously you don't want them at an angle like that and at the same height. And that's it really. Now because I've got stay my archer gears on this side I can't take my nut off to clamp it onto this spindle I can on this side I'll show you down up by I can clamp the spindle on this this side but this side's just going to be resting on the assembly where my stay my archer gear is going to fit so if you've not got stay my archer gears you can just put another your other nut on this side but if you have got stay my archer gears I'm just putting this catch on here that's going to come over the assembly like that just to stop it coming out if you don't want to go to that extreme you could just put a tie wrap round and then all it, is, all it needs doing it just needs a bit of stain on it And if you need some res resistance on your back wheel, just put a tyre up round your brake, round your brake lever, and then that can be adjusted for different pressure on your rear brake. That's it for this little video then. Uh, I can get back onto my loco now. So if you've not seen uh, me building my loco, I've done a full series of that. Take a look at them if you're interested, and if not, I'll catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching then, bye for now.